Uh, nothing like some nice mid-elevation xeric shrublands in Nuevo Leon. And this Brichelia species, Varanisifolia, smells so good. Opposite leaves, highly glandular. The Stevia tribe of Asteraceae, Eupatoria, the Joe Pieweed tribe right there. It's not flowering, but fuck all does it smell good. Very ubiquitous shrub here in Nuevo Leon. Also got Gymnosperma glutinosa right there. We got Eisenhardia. A lot of, a lot of affinities with the West Texas floor. We got Malacomales denticulata, which so, so far as I know doesn't occur in West Texas unless it's on some rich asshole's land. Got pinion pines, Yucca carnarosana. We also got Yucca filifera, which is a much larger yucca and tends to be branched. This one, Yucca carnarosana, tends to be, uh, just have a single stalk. Oh, we got an oak here as well. I haven't, I haven't seen this one yet. We've been in a little bit east of here in somewhat more mesic forests. As you go west and get further away, further into the rain shadow of the Sierra Madre, it dries out and you get more of the Xeric shrubland. Got Dahlia bicolor right there. I'll show you some flowers on it because it's a, it's a beautiful fucking plant. A lot of good stuff here. Pitalea trifoliata. Rutaceae smells really good. A lot of good stuff going on. Caliandras. We got Mimosa Texana. Let's keep going and see what else we got. See, you know, we got this nice Ipomea. Those showy, showy purple flowers. Quite a few Ipomeas are horribly invasive. Namely the ones from other continents like Asia. But this one, uh, or as a bensis, I believe is a species. Don't quote me on it. Seems to be behaving just fine because it's adapted to the ecology here because it evolved there. Surely getting hit by uh, butterflies. Probably a number of bees too. Look at that. Pitalea. God, I love that. Oh, who's this? Oh, it's, an, it's an oak. We got an oak and pitalea. Oh, nice turkey vulture out there in the background. And we got a Desodia species, which, you know, it's amazing you don't get any of these larger Desodia species in the United States because they really are. They're a charm, man. They smell good. Marigolds, members of the marigold tribe. They got little orange glands. I don't know if you could see them right here. But, uh, you know, they got the, all those all those volatile compounds in the leaves that make them smell really good. I think this one's just an annual, but holy hell. What a pleasant scent. Oh, that Malacoma leaves is such a stunner. The flowers are cool too, but the fruits especially. And the birds love them. Oh, we got Roos virens. We're back with Roos virens, not Roos pachyrachis which has hairier leaves. Looks like a pubescent virens. God, there's so much good shit. Is that Quercus striatula? Striatula? Yeah, you know, the more you study regional botany, and the more you see that Texas is really just Mexico. Maybe it should be Mexico again someday. <laughs> Texans are sure really fucking it up. No offense. Anyway, there's that dahlia. There's that dahlia by color. Ah, uh, <clears throat> one of the dahlias. Flowers are purple with white up top. I don't think there's any up here. I saw some back there. What a fucking great plant. Isenhardia. Got that Ipomea. Berberus trifoliata, aka Agarita. Somebody lost their pants. Happens to the best of us sometimes. Got Parthenium everywhere, which is a native pioneer species. Oh, I'm loving all this limestone. Limestone substrate is everything. Ooh, who's this? You know what? I was thinking this was Quercus striatula, but this might actually be Quercus moriana, which we get in West Texas as well. It's got more of a glaucous color, and it's better adapted to the drier conditions of the western flank of the Sierra Madre Oriental. Again, the rains come from the east. They hit that mountain range. Sque the air gets squeezed out as it rises. Much like a sponge, and then it's dry coming west. That's why you get all the cool cacti and more xeric shrubs out here. Lots of nice agaves. Yeah, this feels just like West Texas, man. It basically is. You know, I, that might be yucca filifera, just young ones. Carna rosana generally doesn't get that tall. I think it can, but it's got much stiffer uh, leaf blades. Anyway, uh, so Mammillaria is a huge genus. I think there's over like 300 species. I think this is Mammillaria melanocentra. It looks like Mammillaria hyderae. And my acantha, except it's got more trichomes in the apical meristem, which you can't really see right here. It's not as pronounced, but on some of the other individuals it is. There's a shit ton of mammillaries. I like these little hockey puck mams, though. More people need to be growing these from seed. 
So I was thinking this was Pinus remota. Oh, look, it's an agave bug. These guys really, uh, unless it's that triatoma, I think it's just an agave bug. Yeah, we get them on agaves in West Texas. Thought this was Pinus remota, but it's not. Look at that cone. Oh, it's got seeds in it, probably all duds, but it does have a different growth habit. It's got uh, more sparse foliage and needles in fat. We got to look at the how many needles to a fascicle in pines. One? I think it's just one. Oh, shit. Well, we left that spot. Now we're about 2,000 feet higher. Well, no, 1,200 feet higher and more towards the east where the rain actually hits where it drops. So not as dry as where we just were. Got an interesting Crataegus species here. Hawthorns. The genus of Hawthorns. I've got a friend who studies this. I'm not really sure why. I mean, I like them, but, uh, you know, I guess there's a lot of uh, nuance and a lot of... Uh, interesting speciation going on but uh you can see this covered in talanza you got lichen and everything lots of moisture up here very shiny glabrous leaves here's a seedling and you got them thorns also got budlea cordata over there a tree budlea lots of interesting oaks not surprisingly and uh you can see it's cattle grazing up here but uh Otherwise, relatively intact forest. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it appears to be Juglans mollis. It's a walnut. Walnut, pines, oaks. Get that penstemon. Not surprisingly. Got a geranium. That's Zemanii. But the fungal diversity here is quite nice. Is it a walnut or a or a hickory? Looks like it might be a hickory. And you think you've seen it all. An epiphytic physalis. You know those flowers. Very distinct corolla pattern. And the fruits. Oh, this is cool. We got a Ceanothus, which is, of course, hyper diverse in California. This is Ceanothus buxifolius, I believe. You got those three veins on the leaves, and you got those branches that uh, just terminate into spines. Buckthorn family, Ramnaceae, you got nitrogen fixing. Actinomycete bacteria in the leaves. Very glabrous leaves, too. God, look at just You can tell the moisture they get up here. You got Tillandsia on everything. This is where the moisture rises and gets squeezed out. You get that rain shadow effect. The rain shadow that's created to the west, this is where the rain goes. Right here, you got the Roldana. You got these wonderful oaks. I mean, this speed oak diversity is just fucking nuts here. Limestone base. You got Gymnosperma. That walnut. Crataegus. Ooh, we got a little snail on there, too. How about that? And now, higher up, we got Roos pacaracus, which, again, has a pubescent stem and pubescent undersides to the leaves. I was incorrectly misidentifying, or I was rather misidentifying this as a virens a few days ago, even though I thought it looked different, but, uh, and indeed it does look different. It's a different species. Ooh, what's this, Salvia? Microphylla? Yeah, look at that. Oh, I love the smell. Hummingbird crack. Absolutely gorgeous oak right here. Oh, incredible. Nice juniper beneath it. Got the crataegus beneath it. There's the acorns. Nice view of that acorn cap. I get the pubescence, the yellow venation, the golden venation. Undulate leaf margin, not revolute, and coriaceous leaves. Who knows what the fuck species it is? I'll probably never know. <laughs> there was a book that came out on Mexican oaks. Looks amazing, but it was expensive and very limited, limited print. So I like, I touched it once. That's the closest I got. I was, you know, you can't buy it. I think you can buy it. Maybe it's like 200 bucks, but it was a convoluted ordering system. I spoke to the author. She was really nice, but it was just a really convoluted ordering system, and you know, there's you can't you can't get it. It's basically inaccessible, like that small scale uh, TV show me and Alex Scorch made. Ooh, how canescent 
Look at the pubescence on this Roldana. Roldana is a cool genus of Senecioid. It's related to Senecio, so that means somewhat the rubbery uniseriate phyleries in yellow flowers. It's a lot of diversity here. But multi-stemmed shrub to, uh, I don't know, what, two meters? I've seen some that are three. Very common. Now we got salvia. Salvia reflexa. Tiny blue flowers, somewhat common. If these guys are gonna let me, you let me through, or you're gonna be a dick, huh? Come on, I gotta go over there. We got the Turistramonium here. Got some. These cows are chill now, but they were getting turned up a little early. We got this salvia species, which is a somewhat weedy salvia species with tiny flowers. So it's a, a pioneer species. As you can see it thriving on disturbed lands. Then we got this uh, Plantagenaceous bastard with uh, two two carpels in that ovary. Yeah, these are hickories. Look at that leaf shape, the leaflet shape, rather, compared to uh, the narrower juglans. That's cool. Incredible forest, man. Ah, oh, and Juniperus flaccida, which only occurs in Texas in the Chizos Mountains and is not grown anywhere near as much as it should. It looks so healthy here. Oh, it smells great. Oh, this is kind of cool. So this is uh, this is in the avocado family, Loraceae, as you can tell by those avocado-looking fruits. But uh, this is the genus Litsea. There's the tiny flowers. Axillary flowers, if you could see the anthers, they'd be valvate, which is a synapomorphy of the avocado family, Loraceae. Look at the undersides of those leaves, though. Pubescent. Glabrous up top, pubescent below. It's this small shrub coming off this road cut. Got a big rootstock down there. I wonder how tall it gets. There's another one up there. Yeah, how, how big did these get? Oh, we got mosquitoes. Not smart mosquitoes. I just smacked them. Not too smart. That's cool. New genus for me. Actually, I saw one yesterday, but uh, not the species. See, there you go. There's the fruit. Squish it open. Even looks like a little avocado. And there's a seed. So it's a droop, a single seed inside. Oh, this is kind of exciting. So, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't even know what family. There's no fruits or flowers. Maybe Ramnaceae, maybe the Buckthorn family. Everything's covered in pubescence. Uh, it looks The leaves look like a madrone at first, except for those white pubescent petioles. And then if you look at the bark, there's nothing. There's a madrone in the background right there, but this is not a madrone. Is that the same plant up there? I can't tell. Really need fruits or flowers to figure out what the hell I'm looking at. There's a little something. Wild. Wow, that's kind of cool. Almost looks kind of magnolia-ish. Can't figure it out, though. How exciting it's going to be to finally figure it out, though. Yeah, if I had flower, maybe I'll see another one that's got flowers or something, huh? Oh, there we go. What's that? Not a magnolia. I don't know what this shit that is. Can't quite see those flowers. They're way up there. And then looking somewhat like it, we have a garia species as well. Opposite leaves. And uh, there's the emerging inflorescences. What are the silk tassels? You've heard me rant about gariaceae before, haven't you? And of course, you got, looks like little, uh, look at the very pronounced nodes. Looks like segmented stems, basically. Got all manner of eryngium up there. I think that's longifolium. There's also serratum here as well. And limestone is the substrate we're working with. Oh, wonderful madrones. Wonderful, absolutely phenomenal madrones. Who's this over here? Oh, that's that garia. God damn, that's a, that's a massive leaf for a garia. Jesus. And up here at 7,200 feet, we got Abies viharii as well. A fur. Probably a lot of mycorrhizal affiliates with this guy. Beautiful fur species. A Christmas tree. God, these forests are just so diverse, man. It's not some drone. You got your, uh, you get your walnuts slash, those are the walnuts. Yeah, that's the, that's the walnut down there. We got the hickories and more dry sites behind this. And we got that, uh, what is that? 
I forget, is that a Foradendron or Viscum? I just, uh, just identified it last night, I forgot. Yeah, that is a beautiful, look at it. Look at that garia. That's a beautiful garia right there. And then up on it, uh, up to the east of that row cut, we got Agaratum corymbosum, which I was mistakenly identifying as conoclinium, but you can see it's got opposite leaves. They got a serrate margin on them. Same tribe, Eupatoria tribe, with those long ass styles, those long purple styles. But actually, is this Abies or this might be a this might be a spruce? No, it looks like Abies. I have to. Yeah, I think I think it's Abies. You need cones. I need to see cones to check it out. Look at this. We got a mistletoe coming out of this pine. It's a uh, five needled pine. So it's one of the white pines, maybe Strobiformis, but in all reality, I have no clue. But you can see this mistletoe just popping out. These have explosive dehiscence, some of these things. And then down here, we got what looks like a cotinus species, but I can't quite see it. But this seems like, I, you know, I would expect to find a smoke tree here. I would expect to find a cotinus here. Oh no, that might just be the garia. It's got opposite leaves. I'm hoping, see, I'm hoping. I'm just hoping to see a Cotinus. We got a Roos here as well, which looks unlike any of the Roos trilobata or Roos aromatica that you'll see in the States. I mean, the, the temperate lineages of plants do some wild stuff at these higher elevations at lower latitudes. It's just, it's crazy, man. Oh, look at this bean. That's a fucking bean. Look at those white flowers. That's a phaseolus. It's a twisted phaseolus. Twisted keel. Here it's a vine. There's the leaves. And emergent flowers. Nice nice looking bean. It's a nice that is what you call a nice looking bean. It's another close up money shot. Oh those fly there you go. That's good. Growing with Bernonia Gregii. Let's see that. Get, get a nice, get, get over there. Get, get over there. Just get there. Yeah, there you go. No, we have confirmation. It is an Abies. Look at those erect cones. Wonderful fur species, man. Jesus. You get Picea here, too. Well, this really gives you kind of an idea of what might have been going on at warmer periods. You know, when, uh, you know, 10 million, 15 million years ago, maybe even further back. Oh my God, look at that fucking Talanzia. Oh, it's look, it's full frontal. Oh, look at that, look, beautiful Scaloparis minor. Waiting to go into his hidey hole. And you got four grown ass men completely losing their minds over it, which that makes me happy. That alone makes me happy. Look at, why are you so skeptical? Thank you, sir. Thank you for waiting for us. Oh, you got a nice little mossy den in there. Oh, oh. This is what it's come to, you know. This really is what it's come to, you know. But it could be, you know. At least it's not heroin, huh? And we came down a little bit slightly lower. We got a Arctostaphylos pungens, which is one of the most widespread manzanita species next to Uva ursi. Basically a mini madrona, shrub madrona. Still got that mycorrhizal association with the... Uh, or butoid mycorrhizae uh, for the roots, and then that beautiful red bark. And here are his, uh, is those leaves. Alternate with a pubescence on the stem. Oh, look at it, you can see, look at all the, you can see the, see the mesophyll cells. Got that, and then we got another cool, then we got a madrone right there, which is cool, and then we got another uh, arbutoid bastard right here, this Camarostaphylus polyfolia. So, Tons of diversity in Arbutoidae, which is nice to see. That Camarostaphylus is nice looking, isn't it? Linear leaves. Linear leaves on that guy and uh, multiple, multiple stems.